thank you all for taking time out of your filmmaking lives <laughs> and regular lives to do this, um, which is almost a good way to begin with, with Varda in a way, just yeah. the way she kind of blends. Um, I was just reading a quote um, in an interview she did uh, when we had Faces Places on the cover where she, she talks about, you know, you take a small subject or a seemingly small subject and, and it actually turns out to be a big subject. Mm -hmm. um, that seems to be a good, good, I don't know, theme that runs through her work. Um, but for starters, I just thought it might be interesting because uh, I think a lot of people encounter Varda at different points in her, her career, different points in your careers, and different films or features. So I'm curious what your first point of contact was. What was the first film um, directed by her that you remember seeing? Whoever wants to jump in first. I have to say it's simply um, yeah. probably The Gleaners and I. Yeah. I mean, that's sort of the, the starting point uh, for yeah. me with her. Yeah. It's really hard to hear. Oh, uh, sure. The Gleaners and I, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, mine was also the Gleaners and I. I was mm -hmm. actually living in Cuba, uh, in Havana, and oh, wow. uh, I was like 19 and saw saw the Gleaners and I there, and then also discovered her short film and her pho photographic work that she did in Cuba. Mm -hmm. um, and at the time, I uh, was I was coming to film through photography. I was working in a dark room there, and. Um, I did not net yet have director in ambitions. I was actually studying to be a DP. And um, yeah, so it was kind of the Gleaners and I was a very explosive work in my mind, but then her her view into Cuba in the 60s um, was also just a really nice way for me to experience the country when I was there through her work. Uh, I have to do math uh, yeah. decades later. <laughs> okay. Decades later, right, yeah. yeah. I think I'm pretty basic. Um, <laughs> I started with Cleo. Uh, I went to Ithaca College upstate, and I forget if it was in a class or at Cornell Cinema, but um, that was kind of my introduction mm -hmm. yeah. in sort of an academic environment. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, that's interesting because some. I think because her, you know, couple, two or three of her movies are such like syllabus classics in a way, a lot, a lot of people see them that way. I mean, how did it change later when you see these films, you know, later on in your career? Like, say, Cleo, when you see it again later, how, did it change for you in some way? Or? I think definitely. I think, you know, as my, cinema, my knowledge of cinema has grown, my love of Varda has grown, and sort of how she's positioned herself in the past, you know, five years, mm -hmm. and sort of she makes herself the subject of her Doc so much and has kind of um, really shaped how we define her work. Mm -hmm. I think that it's changed in my mind. So going back, even now, for the retrospective, I went back and saw a few films that I hadn't seen in a while. And, you know, something about her work that's so resonated from the beginning is its playfulness. Mm -hmm. And like I saw Gleaners and I again, and there's, you know, a two minute shot of just a lens cap. And she's like, and now we're gonna do, like I showed you this, and now I'm gonna show you the dance of the lens cap because I kept rolling. <laughs> and it struck me so deeply because I feel like filmmakers don't play as much. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And yeah. that to me was such a defining factor of her work when I started getting into it. It just felt like I hadn't been spoken to like that. Mm -hmm. I think also in revisiting her work both towards the end of her life and also just kind of looking looking back over this retrospective. I think viewing her work as a body of work changes my perspective on it as, as opposed to just singular films that kind of intersected with me. They were almost selfish viewings, like watching her films and how they were impacting me as an artist at that moment, uh, the expansion of ideas about perspective, etc. I can directly point to those, but then looking at her work as a body of work and examining her as an artist is actually the shift for me in probably these last five years and going back seeing something like Cleo and then seeing the experimentations in her early shorts that she was doing in, the, in this avant-garde way that then you see the rhyme echoed and it's like oh it was perfected in Cleo mm -hmm. and when I saw Cleo I was like oh this is this radical new idea but actually she had been working on it for eight 10 years at that point. And so it's just really interesting learning 
learning. I don't know. She's so open with her process. Yes, so it's like totally. she's just the, the ultimate teacher, I think. Yeah. And I mean, just to think about being a filmmaker up until the age of 90, you know, it's so like we're it's just so inspiring. <laughs> you know, I mean, yeah. we were in this industry that's so, um, you know, where a lot of voices are marginalized and like just to see her, um, you know, even her first feature, um, La Pointe uh, uh, Court, right? Um, and just how she didn't really have that much knowledge of cinema, right? You know, and she just sort of did her thing. I think that's something that's so also important because even as a two institution like this, what I love so much about, you know, film at Lincoln Center is that, you know, like me, I'm not really much of a cinephile, even though, you know, I, I you know, I, as much as I, and just having this opportunity to come and experience her whole body of work in a retrospective, I was just like, oh my gosh, like this is like, yeah. you see these threads and these links yeah. that you were saying. And, um, you know, how do you sort of of navigate this film world and you get to to see that you know with Agnes far as this pioneer and yeah. you know this French new wave cinema and I think um, it's just a reminder that you know um, just seeing how she goes weaves goes between photography incorporating still image in her moving image work you know just something that I like to do too in my work so you know it was really quite nice to also just be reminded like you were saying you cinema a syllabus classics, you know, yeah. just having this opportunity to sort of go back and remind remind yourself uh, to play and to to mm -hmm. to sort of you know wander with the camera. Yeah. And I think that that's something sort of I, I like to take away yeah. with the the pro her process in making documentary and fictional works. I, I was read this article today about how female athletes are outperforming men in uh, endurance sports. And how, like, in most sports, if you measure for, like, either speed or strength or whatever, men outperform women in smaller trials. But on the endurance, when it's, like, swimming the channel or, like, long, like, three-day races that women actually significantly outperform. And I was like, that's Varda. That's, like, the goal. It's, like, full body, like, go to 90 all the way. Like, that's the hope. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean it's yeah. Her, her, her. She spans so many different eras, and she's important to so many different periods. Uh, you know, it's an interesting. Bring both you brought up the photography aspect. Um, I mean, coming out of the '50s um, and like a, almost a street photography tradition that kind of infuses the films in that period. And, and Cleo is such just like a city street film on top of just what everything else it is. And I, I just found that watching her films again that's an energy that's in there throughout, I think. Yeah, I think I'm appreciative that she's unapologi unapologetically female. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think that um, that's what's always read so true. And I think being in film school, being young, needing heroes to look up to, she was just so about her own shit. <laughs> and that I found so inspiring because I think there are certain themes, there are certain concepts visually and narratively that I've always been interested in. And I feel like she just, she was never embarrassed that she was going to keep exploring these identities mm -hmm. in different ways. But like you see, that's why her work is so strong as a full complete set because mm -hmm you always know that it's her mm -hmm. and you can always see that she's exploring these things through her own aging. And I think that that's so beautiful. The personal nature of the work, you know, stylistically. You're going to get yelled at again. I'm sorry? You're going to get yelled at again. I know. <laughs> For the mic. Oh. Keep, keep the mic. You have to keep the mic up. Oh, yeah. gosh. The, per <laughs> <laughs> the personal nature of her work, you know, just sort of combining, you know, the personal and the political together and, um, and just weaving in these narratives that connect to to various different people and cultures. You were mentioning Cuba, and um, I, I found that also very refreshing. Um, uh, it's really sort of great to also see her works, the short form works as well, right? Because she's she's made a number of features, but also going back and forth between the short form and the feature and then the installation. It's kind of like having this by any means necessary vibe, right. you know, yeah. especially, you know, and even with subject matter, which I thought was really great that yeah. 
you know, she didn't limit herself to what her interests were. It could it could have been anything from you know a fishing village to Black Panthers, you know. And I yeah, thought true. I thought that was really cool that she just kept um, kept it moving, treated the moving image form like you know it like she was constantly moving with age and with time mm-hmm. and with um, you know the form. And I thought that was really also something yeah. that I I um, enjoyed seeing. Yeah, this for film. sure. Yeah, yeah. It's interesting that you said you can always uh know it's her but i also feel like she resists very actively resists this this kind of auteur box that Mm -hmm. oftentimes filmmakers who are looking for that signature or that stamp is because something like one sings the other doesn't and the gleaners and i are like formally stylistically worlds apart and they still feel like the same artist. And there's, I don't know, when I was going back and looking at her work in the body, I'm like, what, what is that? What is that element, mm-hmm. that playfulness? Like, it's infused in every frame, but formally, like, she's taking risks. She's like a punk, like, every single time she makes a film, which is like, <laughs> that's the thing. The thing is, yeah. is that resistance and that, res- that like, um, provocateur or, and not even just to provoke, but to provoke herself. Like she's asking those questions internally every single frame. I don't know. It's it's such an interesting signature to have because it's it's a question. It's like a question she's always asking when she's making or something. I don't know. Well, that's not almost why I think she's like the only a tour, <laughs> like okay. potentially the longest one that like we've got. Yeah. And it is just a feeling. Like even the title of calling it an emotional cinema, like. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm she owns this in such a way and makes you feel and even if form changes like the feeling is the same and i saw one sings the other doesn't when they did the re-release last year and that was my first time and i was like this film could have been made this year and would still be relevant and it just felt so fresh and new timeless exciting so hard (laughs) yeah yeah, I mean, it's it is it is interesting to to think she. I just feel she was so pioneering, but also almost casually so. But it's very deceptive. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Everything from even her sense of style, you know, yeah. like she always had that, you know, the what are the rose colored glasses, and and I just loved that about her cats, you know, yeah. and these recurring themes in her um, in her life and her work and her. Um, character you know I think it's something that you also want to think about as a filmmaker like how do you navigate this industry and she just did everything with such uh, you know grace really Um, and uh, um, yeah 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 and I mean the auteur I mean that is you know it's such a like kind of macho (laughs) male kind of structure to think about capital A auteurs Um, but but the, it seems like the real the strength that she has is just she, she went through so many different forms, put herself out there so much. I mean, just thinking about one of the things that moved me so much about Faces Places is is having that such a vulnerable ending mm-hmm. that it has. I just can't get over that, you know, where you 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 go to meet some Godard, this this I mean, it's kind of being a jerk, <laughs> and and you're putting hundred percent being, being a jerk. an asshole. <laughs> yes. Let's call him what he is. <laughs> <laughs> And but you keep that in the film, you know. Yeah, like yeah. it's not like that scene didn't work. I would leave it out there. That's part of the. the it was part of the journey, and that's yeah. part of the emotional journey. I, I just find it really amazing. Yeah, I did ask myself if that was staged, <laughs> and I'm still not entirely sure that uh-huh. it wasn't, or that she would like tip her hat. But I was bawling. Like it didn't matter, and I'm not sure it matters still. But it was just heartbreaking. I don't know. Yeah. Sad I mean, moment. I think that was also captured a genuine feeling that she had about her place Mm -hmm. among her peers. And I, I, it it was, I mean, she's being quite vulnerable, but I think she's also being pretty honest. And I think, and I don't know, I I was very uh, surprisingly moved by that film. Um, we, We were just talking about like this feeling of over the last couple of years, her work, like, is this the last one of her films? And actually, when I watched Faces Places, I felt like I was watching her last work. Um, and I think it added a lot to the emotion of it. I, I also just I wanted to ask about 
uh, a bit about the just the practice of filmmaking and because and, I'm very curious I, I, I don't I know I don't want to like you can't draw like a cause and effect or particular things in her work but I'm curious like just as, as filmmakers what you observe in, in what she does particular sequences or scenes or what's impress what impresses you you know at, when at you see in her work I mean the queen of the dolly like yeah. Yeah. those like her blocking and stage work i think when i was young and i watched vagabond i was like yeah man fuck you i'm a woman like i'm going out on the road and then you watch it later and more and you're just like it's such a tight movie it's so structured and you know my feelings towards the movie have only like strengthened and my like bond to this woman but it's this journey that she really takes you on. And I think she's always kind of done those long dolly shots, tracking shots that feel, um, it's so rare that it doesn't feel like a show off move. It feels inherent to the time that you spend with the character and it feels like it needs to be there as these chapter markers. And I think people nowadays do very showy camera work that feels not motivated and every decision of hers feels honest and motivated to me which i think is impressive and also in vagabond she's like she these dolly shots often end not on your subject but on the space on the landscape and it's just it's a really impre like we studied it a lot it's just like she ends on a seemingly empty frame it's not an empty frame obviously but it's just a strange way to cut and it's it works like every time it's it's amazing um yeah the there's also this incredible dolly shot in cleo where she's trying on hats and it's like one of the best shots the uh, the choreography of it the production design like you're through layers you're through all of the products there's this journey this journey of the first hat she tries on is that is the hat she ends with, but she takes you all around the stores on all these different identities, all these different possibilities. It's just, it's one of like the, <laughs> my favorite, I'm like getting chills thing. I'm like, play the clip. Um, no, but, uh, but yeah, she just, she, she designed it, but she designed it. So there's this street photography element to it. And uh, I, I took a photo of my own handwriting of this quote that I just loved. Sorry, it's yeah. about the, uh, which is about this, where she, she wrote, she says, I wrote, one part is conceptualizing and ordering the world, and the other is accepting the world as it is. Those two things together shape the visual arts. And I feel like that's what's so amazing about her, those dolly shots, is they, they don't feel too perfect. Like there's this thing where she trusts what she's seeing, the place she's making, the people she's making with, she leans into that. She has this design, this order that she's chasing, but it's not it's not overdone. I don't know. It's it's this incredible balance of observing and creating. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. yeah. And I think she just has a great way of combining these her two practices, like the fine arts and uh, filmmaking, you know, being and also how in the editing process to like new ideas start to emerge with her. And she talks about that, like how she loves, you know, the editing process. And it's almost, you know, how I feel with the filmmaking process is like almost like treating the filmmaking process like sculpture, you know, it's like you're sculpting something on the timeline. And even when the, the great thing about discovering something new or the subject matter of your choice, when you're out on the field filming, you know, once you're there, you have this sort of fixed script that you may write or text and even just her relationship with text and how she's able to sort of translate that into her own, um, uh, cinematic style is pretty amazing. It's something that I am always sort of, you know, how do you insert yourself in this sort of this is tradition mm -hmm. of, of storytelling with your own sort of, you know, flair. And she just does it from film to film, mm -hmm. short to feature. Um, it's just always so original and, um, but very personal. And you're still connected to her, even though. You know, it's this. You know, the subject matter may change. It's broadly yeah. talking about her work, and um, 
Yeah, I, you know, I just really found it fortunate because I'm I'm seeing some uh, many of these films for the first time. You know, specifically like the Black Panther film, the short. I was in a program of a series of short films she she made, and I was seeing the Black Panther film for the first time, and I was just so amazed and how she was the treatment of um, how she was really there, and um, you know, with the protests, and you know, I could really feel myself in this place you know it didn't really the removal of like you know the um you know, how she was able to sort of insert herself in this environment in such a very personal way it was so refreshing um yeah. it's really difficult even in these times to sort of go out there you know and and um observe you know uh protests and sort of how she was able to treat the subject matter you know you could really feel it there with the hair and um you know hair is a very important subject matter in many of my films and i just you know and i saw her revisiting some of these dolls and hair and i just loved that um yeah. you know this sort of i felt very connected to her um uh um, you know, just as an outsider looking in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's interesting. You know, movies um, that are they're so key to a particular moment in time, like a particular political moment, even. And but the, but the way she captures them, you're inside it, so you don't feel like it's it doesn't feel like this kind of dated, for lack of a better word, kind of view of it. Like, you know, um, I mean, even you know, like um, I mean, one sings, the other doesn't is very much of its time, but I just feel like we're in it somehow, you know, I don't, I don't know. Still fighting the same fights. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Unfortunately. Yeah. yeah. Well, the, we'll talk more about that. That's, I mean, it's, it's, she seems like she's able to, yeah. Well, I, just, I feel like she organically folds it into the world, like even Cleo, which is, you know, this portrait of two hours, this, this famous singer, um, it, it has like a, a glamour to it even that has um you know you're on the streets you get a hint of there's like these student protesters there's like it's always coming into the frame and it's like this amazing you know it's like you could say that i mean cleo's not directly political in the same way that one sings the other doesn't is like those are political organizers that are the subject of the film um, but it's there it's 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 like that's her present tense because that's her body in the street observing those things find like when she's in California she finds her way into the Black Panthers community because that's what she's seeking and I think that that's it's just like bleeding into her work and I think that's really important it's just that you know it's part of her identity as a human, therefore it's part of her, all of her work. And you, it, it feels effortless in that way because it's, it's just part of the world, world around her, you know? And she invites yeah. the viewer to also uh, participate, you know, in, in this process, which I think is really her relationship with not only the subjects, of her, but also the viewer, it's quite, the audience is quite nice. Yeah. I mean, and, and and it came came up earlier that a lot of these um, these these ideas and tendencies are there from the beginning in a way. Um, mm -hmm. I, I hadn't seen um, op opera uh, l'opera mouffe. I'm not sure how to pronounce it. Sorry, <laughs> um, um, uh, but uh, you know, yeah, a lot of that cops up in Clio, and and even parts of it that are also just casually radical. The, 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 you know that it's uh, you know from the the, the 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 still of a nude woman in the beginning that isn't like. You know, it's not supposed to be some like classical sculpture. It's a person. You know, here is a person, um, and and that kind of gets developed throughout the work as well. Yeah, one thing I wanted to kind of mention is, um, you know, when she makes the Hollywood movie, and the way that like she talks about failure and her own personal failure, and how she was like, yeah, no, I messed up. <laughs> like I decided to do this film. It wasn't right. I spent a lot of money. It failed. And then she comes back with Gleaners and I, which feels so of her day to day, of her person, of her life. And that's still ahead of its time. It's like, you know, Gleaners and I kind of, I saw it not when it came out, but it is sort of the sustainable question that we're all asking ourselves is like what we do with food waste yeah. and she was just walking around her neighborhood and picked up a handy cam and it just feels so like when she failed she instead took her cinema more personal mm -hmm. and more towards the home and more towards herself which I think 
is a positive spin on failure. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, and, and and there's such a there's such a resilience to that that's really also is inspiring. You know, I mean, I mean that that's another thing we could kind of talk about. It's just her her career path, which is kind of you know talking about as, as well. Um, I mean, there was definitely a stretch of time where for for where it seems like oh, you know, the the, the movies aren't making the same kind of splash that, that they might have. You know, like Vagabond between Vagabond and Gleaners, there were varying kind of attention paid. But then, I mean, you can't write film history with, with, without her being looming large over it now. Um, but it's interesting how that's, that's something that kind of, that took work <laughs> on, on her part. There was also, a, the, on the Criterion channel, they have like a bunch of behind the scenes, little interviews from different French, uh, all, all over time, little clips. But in one of them, she was also talking about having done some like commercial work mm -hmm. which wasn't isn't I, I wasn't able to track it down on the internet but it also just like I don't know it's just like one of those things that like made my body feel better like knowing that she was yeah she was like hustling and she was like trying to find the how to do this sustainably from the beginning and even her collective uh, I, you know, I find that really inspiring. You know, she, she gave the people who were working on her movies ownership in this, in what they were doing, which is a pretty radical idea, radical idea today. Um, and I just find like her idea of like what a laborer is and the relationship between labor, which is a subject in a lot of her work and the people who are working on her movie. And she says something about the, the value of her film and, and she, she says, well, it costs this much, but this is the value of the labor of the people involved. She adds like $7 million on top of the budget of her film. And she's like, that's, that's it. And I'm going to be paying them back and really honoring the fact that people are, are working and giving themselves to her movies, which, which I really admire as someone who's like leading a team. You know, she, she was also producing her own work, mm -hmm. um, which not every writer, auteur was, was during the new wave. Yeah, and and then there's 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 also the role of, of her daughter, Rosie Livarda, um, who I guess I should mention since she's, she's going to be here for some screenings I think this weekend. Uh, so be sure to check the schedule if you, if you want to see her. She's she's amazing, um, and that that's also a very special and kind of unusual relationship that I, I love that that she, you know they, they were able to collaborate and give their career that boost um, in the past 10, 15 years. Um, but just picking up what you're talking about, and I think Ashley, you might have mentioned an interest in the kind of financing aspect of it, that how she was able to figure that out. And, you know, there are all these particular challenges about making independent movies. Yeah, I just think that she learned to evolve far quicker than anyone else. And it's sort of like she saw the, she saw the end result before anybody else did and just said, I'm just gonna go make films on my handy cam, uh, you know, for her, I think obviously cinema with a capital C, we love film, we love images, but I think when the world stopped giving her money, she decided to take matters into her own hand and, you know, her later work becomes something else. And even her work in, um, like gallery work mm -hmm. kind of takes on a different shape and she's, finding a way through it that works with the finances that she had and, you know, Beaches of Agnes when they're all typing and joking around like in the, you know, sand, uh, they still kind of address that she wasn't getting the financing. Mm -hmm. And that's sort of the world that I entered when I was starting out. And I think that's something that I've always really attached myself to is like, don't let gear or equipment or budgets limit your capabilities as an artist because at the end of it if you're making something honest or true to yourself then the emotions come through and people will respond and so I found that that was very inspiring to me when I was leaving film school and trying to get hired on movies that no one wanted to hire me on so yeah are, are there other uh, just to open it up are, were there moments for each of you that that, that uh, inspire particular I don't know, passages in your films? I know, I, I'm just curious, you know, anything where you're thinking like, oh, this is, maybe this is something, how, what would, like, what, what is it, WWA, what would Agnes do? 
Yeah, I mean, I think the way that she deals with the body has always really inspired me and something that I've tried to carry over in my own cinematography is ways of looking at women and ways of specifically looking at people's bodies and how to actively engage with them, whether it's sex or just viewership, how to not look down at your subjects and that's something that I think she's always done so well and you always feel like there's a caring person behind the camera and that's so rare mm -hmm. so I think that you know I do ask myself you know how does she do that and like how do how does one do that and be a present empathetic viewer mm -hmm. and participant I guess yeah I think that that feeling of audience participation and inviting your audience to participate is something that I really enjoy as a, as a viewer, as when I'm watching work. I think that that's part of all her films. She, say, she says, come on a journey with me. You also need to do work <laughs> and that's okay. And that trusting that your audience, like if you give them the tools early on, they can go on that journey. And it's just about that, that leading them in, teaching them the language of which you're operating and going forth with confidence. And um, I do think this idea of structure, I, just even something like, I also didn't see One Sings the Other Dozen until it was re-released, was it last year? Last year. And just the, I was just reminded again on how, like the structure of that movie is so radical. And I just like, I like, I needed that, I needed to see that. Um, and to, to just understand that there is, there are different ways to go about narrative structure. Mm -hmm. And there is not just one way to approach, like this, This the, I don't think there's any of her body of work that falls into this, what we would traditionally call a three act structure. Mm -hmm. And just say that the, the structure is up for grabs and like I just love that about about all of her work and that's something that I try to think about when, whether it's a three minute piece or a 90 minute piece like this the structure is up for grabs should be the structure should inform uh the relationship with the audience the relationship with the work mm -hmm. I agree um I think for me, I've always been um, inspired by, like, well, through my body of work, the, this has this notion or this collision of identities, right? How you put multiple things together, whether it's sound, image, um, you know, still photography, et cetera, as we mentioned earlier. And I loved that about her work, how she's able to sort of bring multiple elements together and sort of create, like, this radical forms from film to film. And, um, uh, I, I really want to say that that's a way as a female filmmaker also to have control, authorship, you know, um, over your ideas and the subject matter of your choice, you know, and I think that's something that I've always sort of taken away from her whole body of work is like just, you know, sort of being in control. I think control has always been um, important to me as a, a, a filmmaker. And um, she just really knows how to navigate this form in, in this really unique ways. Um, uh, and yeah, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, it's, really it's, it's true. I mean, and, and it's it's also so nimble the way she does. Yeah. You know, I mean, you, you're taking you know, even your faces places are clear. You're, you're, you're just taking like a sudden like left turn in some way, and and the story goes off in some other direction. And that's okay. Like it's and, not yeah. like a bad thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's actually she also lets you go with not her. with the protagonist. Yeah, and yeah. that's okay. That's, exactly. And you're not confused about who the protagonist of the film is ever. <laughs> you're yeah. just like. This, this is important because it's included in this piece of work and you trust her, you know? Yeah. I mean, I'm, yeah, just rewatching Cleo, um, even just the subject matter of the movie, it's like, what is this movie about? And it's about a piece of terrible news, basically, and dealing with it. And, and, and that's amazing to me that that's, that's the whole movie. And, and also just a contrast with like other movies that are getting a lot of attention at the time. It's like Breathless is like, it's a highly referential gangster <laughs> film. It's just like, totally different like kind of direction which i love but uh yeah cleo just i think grows more and more amazing each each time i watch it um, for that reason did you wear this as a cleo reference this oh, wow. purple blouse? but yeah i guess you know i was i guess <laughs> i was cool. feeling a little inspired <laughs> it's, it's great yeah 
Um, <laughs> no. <laughs> Um, well, I, I want to take a moment, make sure that if, uh, the audience chime in if you have any uh, questions you want to want to pose or um, about uh, particular films or yeah. Hi, I want to throw out a, a kind of a general question of the relationship between dialogue, script, mm -hmm. and silence. Uh, do you find that her filmmaking uh, is more powerful when there's no words being spoken. Uh, is there, are films enhanced by the by the scripts that she uses, or do you find that you prefer the moments of observation through observation? I like both. You know, I feel each film, each individual film, and her process in producing and making each film, combining like the scripted and the observational doc, you know, vibe is. Um, I don't know. I don't think one way is superior or significant, you know, more important than the other. I think she really sort of finds a great way to sort of um, let you go with the form, you know, the various forms in which she's working with or that she's playing with. Um, so for me, I don't think I, I, I enjoy I, I enjoy both. You know, I think that I think that's the great thing about her work is that bringing that tension, you know, the scripted and the observational doc together um, uh, is quite nice. Yeah, I, I feel like she's writing at all Film phases writing. of the process. Like there's the short film, La, La, which I'm not sure if you've seen the I also have a very, very bad French accent. L'Opera, I don't know. Go for it, baby. Go for it. Um, but uh, the, it's the, it's a short film and, you know, there's a juxtaposition of a pregnant belly and then a pumpkin in the street market. Oh, right. And yeah. the pregnant That's belly awesome. is on a stage. It's like with a black backdrop, completely composed. The pumpkin was shot documentary style on the street. You know, she's literally frame by frame juxtapositioning something that's highly composed with something found and saying these two are the same to me. They are visually, you know, it's belly pumpkin. You know, it's like they're the same. I see them and I see the same thing. One, I spent a lot of money and time making. One, I happened upon. The consistency is me. And I don't know, I just, I just find that there's... You know, so she has one phase of writing, which is the script, one phase of writing, which is the creation, and one which is definitely the juxtaposition. And at every time, she's finding a way to insert what I would say is scripting into her filmmaking. And so I don't, I don't know if I see the difference, whether she's in her own VO telling you or just showing you. It feels like her words visualized. Mm -hmm. And I think she's also so poetic and, you know, I'm, I don't speak French. I'm a dumb American, but, um, you know, listening to the words, especially this time around, there is such a poetic nature to her words along with the images. And I think that she plays with um, like French sing songiness and I don't fully understand because I don't speak the language, but, um, I was kind of struck watching murmurs where I think she's sort of watch talking about a murmur, a mural and uh, what, you know, all these sort of, she just kind of deconstructs language. And I think that that's so a part of her process and the ways that she brings it all together. And I think, yeah, they're all tied as one. Her imagery always leads the, uh the film i mean uh, the, the, the 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 it's the hard because it. a lot of it's voiceover you know mm -hmm. i was watching document tour mm -hmm. and i think that it is and i think that that's the best directors i've ever worked with are the ones that are never limited by the shots that they take and that is something that she's never i don't think that she ever looks at the footage that she gathers on a shoot and says i can't make this work and that's sort of where her writing can come back in. I, you know, I haven't seen like the raw first draft of a script. And now it's like you Google script and you get some person somewhere like writing what is on the screen. Mm -hmm. So it's hard to know what the exact process is. But to me, I think that she goes, shoots, makes the work, 
and then kind of finds a vessel to carry it in. Right. And sometimes that's her poetry, sometimes that's um, juxtaposing two different shots, but she finds a way through, and that's sort of always been her MO. Mm -hmm. Are all the films silent films essentially? Or are, are all the films what? Are all her films silent films essentially? Or, or are there, can you think of any particular film where where one in a set states the other, where the, where the well, one sings the other doesn't would because she's like singing songs about abortion and yeah. you know, yeah. you know. But singing. even vagabond is like music is so important, Sad. and mm -hmm. all, I feel like all those the songs and mm -hmm. um, must have, must have been written into uh, the the script. You know, yeah. they feel part of they feel specific enough to the world. So yeah. She also has some of the most beautiful credit sequences, just speaking of the way she uses music to, to kind of set, set, th set things up and kind of lay out the, the, the dramatic cast in a way of, of things she's going to talk about. Yeah. Um, any other, any other, another question from the audience? Back. Um, well, just, I mean, just to go on about, since the voiceover came up, I, I just, yeah, just another, that's just another aspect where I think she's just like, the ma one of the masters of it, you know, like you could learn how to do a voiceover just by by studying how, what she does and how she does it. Um, and again, so casual, you know, she's like, she's basically like doing like French theory, except, you know, I, I can understand it, you know, it's like, it's just really beautiful. Um, but I think that started with her like collage style mm -hmm. of an approach to film wasn't necessarily coming with this like capital C cinema idea was that film is a collection of different arts and practices and you know some of her early work like the the salut le cubains i have no idea how to speak french um that you know that's just still photographs and like she just had her leica and she had a nagra i think maybe or just she was just taking stills and recording audio and it's just like those things add up to a movie you know yeah. like if there's even sequences which are like her rapid shooting that look like animation sequences, you know, it's like the precursor, I think quite literally to Chris Marker mm -hmm. saying he was referencing that that <laughs> film. So it's like, you know, that, that essay style, I just think it's like, she's saying, well, these are all the tools I have and I'm the tool that I have most access to. And I, and I mean, that's what I hear in her voiceover. It's, yeah. it's her. I just, well, this is, this is like when somebody at a Q and A is like, I have, not a question, but a comment. Um, I was just thinking about um, in Cleo, she gets Godard to take off his glasses, you know, and like then talks about that in the beaches of Anis, and then in Faces Places, that's the point of the film is like get him to take off his glasses at the end, to like. I don't know. Yeah. Great, great, powerful work that spanned a lifetime <laughs> right, to pull it I off. I don't that's, know. That's like the most brilliant setup. <laughs> you know, yeah. it took, it took 50, 40 years, 50 yeah, years yeah, yeah. For, for that. Um, I have just a very simple question. In addition to the films that you've already discussed tonight, are there others of hers that you would particularly um, recommend people seek mm -hmm. out that are maybe, yeah, again, lesser known? Mm -hmm. That's interesting. The deep cuts. <laughs> Deep cut. I mean, Le Bonheur, I don't think we discuss, but I feel like uh, that film, to me, I think a lot of her films deal with female experience in new and exciting ways, and when I saw that, I just felt like I hadn't seen a movie of that era that talked about receiving pleasure and what pleasure meant and what sort of like a different view on family is. And... I don't know, so it, that felt significant that she created characters who challenged family. And then again, with documentary, it's like, there's a scene with Anya's like actual son playing the son in the movie, and the mom doesn't come home, and instead she's laying in a bed at a beach house, naked, looking at herself, and just observing her own body. And then the son is like, why weren't you here to play with me? And she's like, I don't have to be here, man, you were fine. Like, and just to hear a mother tell their young child, <laughs> like, you were fine, I needed to go do what I needed to do for myself. And that felt so powerful. Yeah, I would say, like, her body of doc shorts, which mm. is vast, is 
well worth like a- any of them and there's a lot there's a lot playing i don't know this weekend what the program left is here yeah but i think there's actually been, like s- bunch, yeah. gotta yeah. collect them all yeah. <laughs> i would say mm-hmm. on that front um documentor um and then i think that there there's this uh documentary about her making it's not by her it's about the making of one sings the other doesn't mm-hmm. and her with her family on set and i think it's a nice pairing with documentor and that is that exact scene that you're talking about just like her actually functioning as a working mother mm-hmm. on a set interacting with her child in front of the screen uh, uh, and behind the scenes her son um just she really really impressive her husband you know um um, also, yeah, her husband, or um, there's also like the daguerre, daguerreotypes, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Um, uh, and yeah, just her collection of shorts is really great. You know, she made a couple features and then she just went on this path of making so many short films, which is also quite nice. You know, uh, we tend to think that, you know, we gotta make that feature, you know, and it's just quite nice to ha- see that she's gone back and forth in these various different forms um, or different uh, forms and subject matter. So, yeah. yeah, I don't know. I mean, there's va- Vagabond, right? Um, mm-hmm. And then, of course, the Black Panther one, of course, I like. But yeah, I don't know. There's yeah. just so, I love the variety. You know, yeah. it's almost like a kid in a candy store, you know? I, I think that's also so important, um, you know, that <laughs> it's like, she really treats the world like her stage. It's really like she's constantly evolving, constantly changing in her craft. And um, again, as I mentioned or responded to your question, I don't think that there was even just the style scripted and observational doc. Like I don't think that there's one that I think is better than the other. You know, I just yeah. sort of, as a viewer, invited into all these different ways in which she's uh, communicating these ideas. Um, yeah, and then I also like her installation work as well. Um, yeah, yeah, you yeah, know, I'm yeah, it's, it's so interesting with with the shorts. I mean, that I, I, you have to think that that's, you know, in some ways, why why, because shorts aren't always haven't always been as easy to see as they are sometimes yeah. now in terms of streaming or other things. So I should mention that there's actually a shorts program, in about half an hour, eight oh. thir- eight thirty, so you can catch some shorts right here. Um, well, I think we're just about coming to the end of time. So if there is one last question that someone. Uh, yeah. Um, thank you, all of you. Um, my question, it's a little bit of a selfish question, because the, the one movie that I saw this weekend, I saw about seven, that blew me away was um, Kung Fu Master, which I didn't know about at all. But just, it, just, I wonder if you could comment on that. I was just so blown away about I'm turning that I'm trope, saying. turning that trope over of like the older man and the younger woman, and just sort of, you know. Reversing that. Do you, you guys have any comments I'm about that film? I'm seeing it on the sixth. So okay. Yeah, I'm yet. not a artist scholar. I'm just a woman. Same. <laughs> well, something something to look forward to. Yeah, it's playing again yeah. on the sixth. So it's yeah. a plug. It's fantastic. I think yeah. it's uh, anyway. It is a remarkable yeah. Yeah. film, yeah. definitely. But I think that that idea. Well, we got to round it out. That idea, you know, of the role reversal has just always been present in our work. And I think I read some quote. They were like, you know, what were you doing as like a female? Like, how did you feel as a female filmmaker? And I think, you know, she's obviously a feminist and defines herself as such, but she was like, I was making my own films in my own way, and they were distinctly not the way the men were making them. And I think that that, to hear somebody say that, and you know, I've been in rooms with women who are like, well, how did the men get the financing? How do we make this happen? How do we like trick people to know? And something, that I try to do on set is like radical honesty. If I don't know something, I'm not embarrassed to say that I don't know it. And I think that there's a freedom in that and you can just feel that in her work that she was never limited by having to have, um, uh, be the loudest person on set. And that's so important. I think that's a great, great moment to end on and, and, and looking forward to uh, all that you will be producing, but thank you so much thank for a wonderful you. discussion. Thank you for having us talk about Varda. <laughs>